Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. From the 7th of April to about the 15th of July, 20 years ago, between 500,000 to 1 million people were killed in Rwanda. Now, that period of time was known as the genocide mass slaughter of Tutsi and moderate Hutu planned by members of the core political elite known as the Akazu, and many of whom were already in top government positions. According to sources, the war took place in the context of the Rwandan Civil War, which is an ongoing conflict that had begun in 1990 between the Hutu-led government and the Rwandan Patriotic Front, composed mainly of Tutsi refugees, whose families had fled to Uganda after their earlier encounter with Hutu violence against the Tutsis. One of the ways they're remembering is via a service at St. Fami Catholic Church in Kigali, where a number of people were killed during the genocide. At the time, many were encouraged to take shelter in churches, schools and public buildings. Unknown to them, it was a ploy to make the killing of hundreds much easier. Most of the victims were slashed with machetes and left for dead. Shortly after Hutu President Juvenal Habayarimana was killed when his plane was shot down over the Rwandan capital. The attack mobilized Hutu government soldiers and allied extremist militia who orchestrated the genocide to exterminate the Tutsi minority. In villages across the densely populated country, Neighbor turned on neighbor as victims were hacked to death, burned alive, clubbed and shot. The priest's message was on resurrection. At the time, hundreds of Rwandans fled to refugee camps in neighboring countries. Many fled to Tanzania, Zaire, where troops and militia of the former Rwandan government are alleged to have committed atrocities and tried to stop refugees from returning home. <laughs> 20 years after, a total of 92 people, overwhelmingly Hutus, were indicted for their role. But only 70 individuals out of thousands involved in the genocide have been convicted by the UN-backed court that was designed to deliver justice. The government said it made more progress with the local courts, trying over two million suspects through its controversial Kachacha system of community courts. The informal courts ran for about 10 years between 2002 and 2012, during which time an estimated 65% of those were convicted. At the start of the week of mourning was a wreath-laying ceremony at the National Genocide Memorial, followed by the lighting of a flame at the Amphora Stadium in the capital, Kigali. President Paul Kagame lit a torch with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who said the UN was still ashamed of its failure to prevent the genocide. We did not need to experience genocide to become a better people. It simply should never have happened. But if a people's choices are not informed by historical clarity, the danger is ever present. This is why I say to Rwandans, let's not get diverted. Our approach is as radical and unprecedented as the situation we faced. Twenty years ago, thousands of Rwandans found refuge in this national stadium, barely escaping the murder and rape that stalked Kigali and the countryside. But today, it is filled with people who are building a new Rwanda 
around our shared culture, traditions, and peace. The torch is expected to burn for 100 days, the length of time the genocide lasted. The torch has been carried across the country for the past three months, visiting 30 districts and passing from village to village. Thank you. And traditional morning songs were sung. Present at the ceremony at the Amphora Stadium were Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, former South African president, Thabo Mbeki, and former UK Prime Minister, Tony Blair. France had said it would not be attending the ceremony following President Paul Kagame's comments in an interview with French language weekly news magazine Jean Afrique. The president had denounced the direct role of Belgium and France in the political preparation for the genocide. The French ministry said the comments were against reconciliation efforts between the two countries. Rwanda responded by accusing the French government of overreacting.